Hello and welcome to Go Projects, a series of short videos showing you how to create small projects in Go in around 20 minutes or less. In this Go project, we're going to learn how to convert text files into PDF files. And with some of the skills that we're going to be learning here today, you should be able to create your own PDF files from any source. But the first thing we need to do is get that package. So in the terminal, we can simply type go get, and then we want github.com forward slash jung hyphen kurt forward slash go f pdf and i'll drop this down in the description if you just fancy copy and pasting it so once we've got that package let's create a new file and i'm just simply going to call this one to pdf dot go and in case you're wondering i'm using the goland ide from jetbrains and i'm using the material theme let's get started first let's uh, do a package main and then let's bring our imports in so in our imports, we're going to need FMT. We're also going to need that GoF PDF package that we've uh, just downloaded. We're also going to need IO IO util. And that is to read in the text file that we're going to convert to a PDF. And we're also going to bring in log to log out any errors. Let's create out our main function. So we want a func main. Now in these videos, most of the time, I'll just be putting everything in the main function. But obviously as you expand on this project, you'll probably want to separate these out into various functions to make the code easier to read and more maintainable. So in our main function, um, let's give it a file. So let's create a new string. I will set this string to the name of the file. So I'm just going to do test.txt. Now obviously at the moment this doesn't exist, but we'll be creating that in a few minutes. So now let's try and read this file in. So this will be a good test of our application to make sure that we are display an output to the end user that they can't find that file. We're going to use IOUtil read file to read this file in. Now it's not the most flexible function, it's just going to grab the whole file, but that's perfect for what we're going to be using for here today. It's going to return us the content of the file and also possibly an error. And then we can just call that function. So we want IOUtil and we want to read file. And then obviously what file do we want to read? We can just pass it in our file variable here. So now that we've tried to read this file in, let's check if there's an error. So if there is an error, obviously we want to log a fatal and then give some feedback to the user. So we can do if error and we want to say is not equal to nil. And if the error is equal to nil, meaning there is an error, let's do a log and we can do a log fatal f for a formatted string. And then let's provide the feedback to the user. So I'm just going to do a percentage s here because I'm going to inject the name of the file afterwards. And we're going to say file not found. And then obviously we need to pass in the string of that file. So that'll get the string of the file test.txt here and output it here. Okay, so if there is no error and it's been able to read that file in, let's move on and let's actually create the PDF file. So I'm just going to create a new variable here called PDF. And then let's create a new instance of the go f PDF library. So we can do a go f PDF dot new. And now this expects a couple of parameters. So the first one is the page orientation. So we can either do P for portrait or L for landscape. I'm going to be using P for portrait. So just a word of warning, as you've probably seen here, when you're using an IDE such as Goland, there is a feature called annotations and this text here is being inserted by the IDE but it's not actually in the file so if you're following along you don't need to type out this this is an annotation just letting me know as a developer what that parameter is so inside of this new function if we just head over to it we can see here the first parameter is orientation str so when we call a function for example this new function Goland puts these annotations in so we can understand the parameters that we're going to be passing in. But you don't type these, you just type the actual parameters. So the next thing this new function is expecting is a unit. And this is a unit of measurement. So when we start adding various different parts of this PDF together, you can pass in measurements. So for this video, I'm going to be using millimeters. So I'm just going to pass in mm. But you could also use centimeters inches and points. Next, it wants us to give a page size. So I'm going to be using A4 for this. 
but you can use another page size, say if you wanted an A3 or A5, a wetter, a tabloid, etc. And then a final parameter is we can pass in a directory to some fonts. Now this is only if you have fonts somewhere else on your system, not in the normal location. So if you're using a font just for this project and you didn't have it installed in your system, then you'd pass the path to that font directory here. But because I'm only going to be using fonts that are installed on my system, we can just pass in an empty string here. So now that we have an instance of GoFPDF, the next thing we want to do is add a page. So we can do a PDF dot add page. And that's simple enough. It just creates a page for us in the PDF file. Next, I'm just going to make this a little bit more fancy and set a font for it. So I'm going to do a PDF dot set font and then tell it what font we want. So I'm going to be using Arial for this. As a second parameter, we can set a style so we could do like bold or italic. I'm going to do bold. So all the text is going to be bold. And then finally give it a size. So I'm going to give this a nice chunky size 14. But now we actually need to put the content into the PDF file. And we can do that with a function called multi-cell. So we're going to be using multi-cell here because what it does, it respects line breaks. And it also breaks down to the next line automatically once the text reaches the right border. Now this is good for us in this program because we're reading a text file we might not always be aware of what that text file contains in terms of text size or text length. So this multi-cell will handle that for us. It'll just break onto a new line once it reaches the end of the PDF page. So the first parameter this is expecting is a page width. And for A4, we're going to pass 190 in here. Now that is a good size. It fills the page nicely, but leaves a little border either side. The next thing we need to pass is a line height. Now you might need to experiment with this a little bit depending on your font and your font size but for Arial and 14 I found that a line height of 5 gives it a good amount of space between each line. Next we need to actually pass in the content that we want to put into this multi-cell. We read in the file here and we named it content. Now the IOU till read file reads the content into a byte slice but the multi-cell is expecting a string. So we need to convert this so we can do a string and then we can pass it in that content. Now we can add a border around this cell. But I don't want to give it a border so I'm just going to pass in a zero here. We can also pass alignment so we could like justify the text or we could center it. But again I'm going to pass zero. I'm just going to leave it on the left side of the page. And then we can fill the cell with a style. But I'm just going to leave the fill empty on this so I'm just going to pass in false. Okay, so finally, we actually have to just output the PDF file. So when outputting this PDF, it could give us an error. So if the directory wasn't writable, for example, but I'm just going to ignore this error for now. So I'm just going to do an underscore here. So we're going to do a PDF dot output file and close. So that'll output the file and then close it. And then we can pass a string to here in the name of the file we want to output. So I'm just going to do a test PDF, for example, here. And then finally, just a little bit of output to the user. I'm just going to do an FMT print line. And we can say PDF created. So now this should fail. Because if you remember at the top of this script, we're trying to read in a file in our current directory called test.txt. But that doesn't exist. So let's see this in action. So over in our terminal, we can just do a go run and then the name of our go file to pdf.go for me. I was going to run this and you can see this error is now triggered and it's saying test.txt file not found. So let's create that file. So over in the root of our project, we can create a new text file and I'm just going to call this test.txt. Now I just have some dummy Laura and Ipsum here. So I'm just going to paste this in and click save. So now let's run our project again. And we see this time the application run through and we get our message at the bottom here, print line, PDF created. So I just head over to the folder where this project is. We can see we now have our test.pdf file. So let's open this. So as you can see, that's read in the text file and converted it to a PDF file. So that's the project complete for the purposes of this video. Some things you might want to consider going forward and give out a try. Instead of passing in a static string here, maybe accept some command line input from the user so the user can run your program 
and pass in any text file that they want converting. Another thing to consider is handling this error when we try and output a file. So you can do something similar to here when we try and read in the file. And also, obviously, everything is in the main function here. Why not try and split certain things out? So maybe you could have the reading of a file in a separate function and then the generation of the PDF in another function. And this will make the application more maintainable as you build upon the base that I've given you here. So if you did like this video, give it a like and subscribe. There will be some more Go projects coming in this series. I will be creating a playlist on the channel so you can stay up to date with the latest videos.